Ladies and gentlemen, boys and uh, welcome to a very special hotel room edition of the Speared Sundays podcast. I'm your host, Lewis Spears. I'm currently recording this one in Sydney. We've got the good camera today, the one we use for Luke and Lewis, because I've uh, started doing something very exciting with my tours uh, and my shows. But uh, so I'm here in a hotel. I've got a flight tonight and I thought, you know what? I'm just going to do my fucking podcast here because I don't want to go back to the warehouse. Now, uh, I did miss last week, uh, but I missed it for a very good reason, because uh, I had organized a massive guest, a big rapper, huge rapper from Sydney. I think you know who it is, I think you can guess who it is. So I thought, well, I gotta go and do that, so I'll miss an episode, but that's all right, because I'll come back with an amazing episode, right? A fucking banger for you guys. So it's all set, ready to go. I mean, that's why I got this camera. That's why I got this fucking half-rigged setup because turns out these, I had to buy table tripods for my microphone, right? Turns out this microphone's too heavy for the tripod, so I had, I had to put it in a, in a teacup. It's a shit that holds a bunch of tea and sugar. So I've got a really sweet microphone right now. I think that might fuck it up a little bit, but hey, it's Speared Sundays, all right? You don't come here for high production value. What do you want? What do you want, Luke and Lewis? No, it's Speared Sundays, okay? It sucks, and that's kind of why we're here. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I thought, you know, it doesn't matter if I miss an episode because uh, I'm going to... Oh my God, what the fuck? Oh. Ah, oh, fuck. See, I don't know how to use this camera. Hang on. Can you turn that oh, back on? My computer off. What do you mean? Oh. No, I didn't. How do I turn your computer, computer off? Just died. Oh, Keelan's computer's just died and so is my camera. I think we've been hit by an EMP. <laughs> what? What the fuck's happened? Yours is still plugged in, bro, isn't it? Yeah, it's still plugged in. Well, I just... The only thing I did was I turned the PowerPoint on because my camera just died. Guys, we've just had an emergency blackout here. We've still got audio going because this is running off battery. Maybe your MacBook Air has finally died well, after all of the editing I've been putting through it. Yeah, try to turn it back on. We'll see if we'll get the visuals back. And if we do, we might take a quick pause here. And we're back. I've also been informed by Keelan that it was, wasn't in focus for that little bit. So maybe we just needed that blackout uh, just so I could focus the fucking camera. But hey, again, welcome to Speared Sundays, all right? The worst podcast in Australia that somehow does very well. <laughs> um, so yeah, what I was saying was um, had a huge guest lined up, rapper from Sydney. You know who it is, right? Been trying to work this up for ages. Finally got it in. Finally got it in the bag, organized it, texting. Yep, I'll be there, meet you at this time. Sweet, no worries. Skip an episode, fly up to Sydney, pay Keelan to come with me, buy his flights, accommodation, get a nice hotel that'll look good on camera, right? I, I bought a fucking a, a, a handy recorder that I got on my desk here. Sorry if you all heard me picking it up, but I got one of them. I bought a couple table tripods. I brought my big camera, risked it, finally get it all sorted, texting, I'll see you tomorrow man, see you tomorrow morning, great, 9am, this morning, jump in the shower, getting ready, it's going to happen, 11, get all my questions ready, everything, all researched, no worries, get out of the shower, six missed calls, the police have intervened. <laughs> <laughs> um, and the police have, have stopped it from happening. So uh, he's fine. It's nothing major. But um, unfortunately, uh, that episode was, wasn't meant to be. So uh, didn't make it to, my, to me. Uh, nothing hectic has gone. It's just a misunderstanding. All good. But, uh, you know, hopefully I'll come back to Sydney and we'll get it done regardless. But, um, you know... There's a plus side to anything, everything. Now I ha now I have the the perfect setup for to do a guest episode. Um, but yeah, so I'm 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 here now anyway. So Sydney was fun. I'm I'm up in Sydney. The main reason I'm here, I didn't fly up here just for a podcast, so it's all good. The main reason me and Keelan are here is uh, because I got booked for Macquarie University to perform. I did a university gig, and a lot of comedians out there they're a bit scared of university gigs because all the children get offended all their feelings matter and it's a safe space and you can't talk about certain subject well 
Let me tell you something about me, all right? I love a bit of outrage. I'm not scared of nothing. I don't give a fuck, right? I'll go wherever, I'll do my jokes. I won't change my set at all, okay? And I'll do my shit and uh, people will love it or they'll hate it. And um, got to Macquarie University. It was uh, packed, maybe like 150 kids. So that was good. They're all, they're all drinking. It was at the university bar, U-Bar, I think they call it, which is very original. And uh, we got all set up and uh, there were a few local acts on and they were all great. And then I got on and, and uh, you know what, guys? I uh, didn't modify my set at all. I had a little, little think before I went up. I was like, should I do my 15-minute bit about hitting women during sex? <laughs> should I do that bit? And then I thought, you know what? I'm going to do that bit and I'm going to push it as far as we can go and let's see how the kids like it. And you know what? A couple of offended people, for sure. I saw them. Uh, but for the most part, it was a, it was a really, really good gig because I love pushing back against that. That, oh, I don't know if I can laugh at this. Uh, and then you get you get them to. It was really, really good. Uh, and uh, I've actually been keen to do a, a few more universities because, yeah. I don't know. It was good, man, um, doing that shit. I, uh, the, the, the main reason I brought Keelan, though, is... This is a pretty big, big move for me. This is something that I've been doing thanks to the support that I've been getting on Patreon, uh, which has been amazing. You guys have really fucking stepped up and helped support this output of content because I've never put out this much, this volume of content at this quality for so consistently. It's been almost a year now where we've been doing like pretty much two videos a week. It's over half the year we've been doing it this year. Everything's doubled, the views are up, everything's going nuts, the, the videos are coming out, people are loving it, it's really, really good. Luke and Lewis is back, it's fucking awesome. And that's really, Patreon is the backbone of all of that because I wouldn't be able to afford any of it if it wasn't for that. Um, now, the next step in the operation, which uh, I would love, if you're looking for a reason to get on Patreon, now's the fucking time because I'm uh, stepping up with or without you. <laughs> and I would really appreciate if you were with me. So what we're doing is... Uh, the reason why I've bought this this new Zoom audio recorder and uh, another big reason why we got this camera, not just for Luke and Lewis, um, is on this tour, no slide season, I'm going to fly Keelan with me with all of this gear and we're going to film every single show I do on tour. Now, before you think, oh, Great, he's going to put it out online. I don't have to go. No, cunt, all right? I'm not burning an hour's worth of material just so you can sit at your home and I can be poor, okay? You've got to come if you want to see the material. What I'm doing is every I want to put out every bit of crowd work because every single show, something hilarious happens that only happens at that show. You know, you talk to the audience, you get some shit back. Sometimes you get a heckler, this and that. It's uh, every single show I do these days, especially now that I'm getting better at my crowd work, something funny happens. And every single time I just wish, man, I wish I could film that. And so many people are asking me, man, you need to put out more stand-up clips, but it's so hard and so expensive to do. It's impossible to do by myself. I need to fly Keelan out. I need all this new gear, which we now have. Um, and, but basically, the, the reason I took Keelan to Sydney was to do a little test run to film this university gig. So something that was safe, something that we could fuck up if we wanted to. And I actually put up a little clip of the, of the audio and the visuals on my Instagram. It's called Lewis Spears in a Safe Space. Um, at about halfway through the audio levels, we work it out. And um, that's what, that's the level of quality they should look. Like the camera from behind is whatever. That's my old podcast camera, but that's mainly just to catch the laughter. But the front-on camera angle, that's the, you know, shot in 4K, you got my whole body, you can zoom in, it still looks really clear. And that's what we're going to use to film every single show on the No Slide Season Tour. Tickets available at loosebeers.com slash gigs. Um, because, yeah, man, it's, uh, I'm not going to lie, it's been pretty frustrating as a, a stand-up comedian. You know, stand-up is my number one focus. That's what I'm so... Uh, passionate about that's what I put the most effort into but by far that is what gets seen the least because you know even if I sell even if I sold right 20,000 tickets which obviously I'm not that's not even 20,000 available but even if there was 20,000 tickets available and 20,000 people came that is a tiny minuscule fraction of the people who watch my shit online do you know what I mean so like the the, the amount of effort I put in versus the amount of people see that effort is tiny. So it's kind of frustrating that 
that my best shit isn't being seen by the most amount of people because obviously it's not online and that's how you fucking get it out there. So with the help of Patreon, I'm flying Keelan to every single fucking city. We're filming every single show and we're cutting down every single bit of spontaneous crowd work, stuff that I make up on the fly. I'm going to be doing many more jokes about stuff that's currently happening. So I've got like my hour long set. But I think at every single show, I'm going to be talking about the town that we're in. I'm going to be talking about shit that's been happening in the news or online or whatever on stage in the moment that only that crowd gets to see once. And then we're putting that shit out online. And hopefully uh, by the end of the tour uh, and then a few more shows after that, we could have a year's worth of stand up clips coming out to last until the next tour. So that's the fucking goal. Uh, with this and uh, if you want to help make that possible patreon d is the way to do it so just search my name on patreon even if you're given three bucks or six bucks we've got a discord uh, we've got a whole fucking community around this shit that's been really really supportive everyone's in there i'm always in the chat uh getting roasted normally getting bullied because of course they're my fans um but yeah, man, I'm really really excited about it and uh i'm a i'm just so fucking keen to show you guys uh, more of my stand-up uh, to hopefully get more people to coming out to the shows because obviously that's the goal. So anyway, enough talking about uh, my Patreon. The gig was fun, dude. I had uh, you would have seen there was a little bit of crowd work. I made fun of the whole safe space thing and feelings and that, but no, nah, the um, the kids responded to it pretty positively. I think that universities can be you can get a little bit of you can get quite a lot of pushback, but I feel like as long as you communicate that you're not an asshole and you are there to tell jokes the kids get around it i but but i totally it seems the vibe from from I, what i see online it seems so much worse in america like it seems like you can't even you can't even try to make certain things funny over there i don't know what the fuck's going on in america bro you guys just you guys just all you guys do is fucking yell at each other on twitter and then shoot each other in the supermarket that's all you cunts do like, pick a hobby. Do something else. It's a mental health problem, not a gun problem. Meanwhile, fucking zero other countries deal with this unless they're in the third world. Oh, but what about knife crime? Okay. How many cunts can you kill in 30 seconds with a knife? Is it one and then yourself? That's that thing, man. I don't know. But 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 also, I, I, get, the, I get the gun rights argument, you know. I saw something really funny on Twitter where where someone who was pro-gun rights, they wrote, uh, how can you say that we don't need assault rifles, but also believe that the government is running concentration camps? Which I thought was a great point, because if you believe that the government is running concentration camps and is becoming a police state, surely you'd want to arm yourself to protect the rest of the nation against the government. It's like those two things are hard to exist in the same world, I suppose. I don't know. But then, but then I'm like, well, okay, let's say that even if there is an evil government, what the fuck are you going to do with your little rifle? Are you really going to organize a fucking militia? No, you're not. And if you do, you know what's going to happen? They're going to drive a tank through your street. Done. I don't know. Guys, what I'm trying to say is that I am the I'm superior because I have no opinion. <laughs> That's what I'm really trying to say is I don't know the correct answer, but I can definitely tell you both sides flaws, and for some reason that makes me the superior person cuz I'm better than both sides and I got no opinion. Really, I'm just sitting here. I got no fucking dog. I got I got no dog in the fight. You know what I mean? I'm just watching on Twitter. Just laughing at Donald Trump blaming mass shootings on video games. Oh, what? You only have video games in America? What kind of games are you guys playing? Must be playing some fucking realistic ones by the look of it. That was one thing that, that, that I know. I know everyone's bashing Trump at the moment. Oh, you orange man bad. And I'm sick of all that shit too. But you have to admit, no matter how much you support Donald Trump, him blaming a mass shooting on video games is full on fuck your face retarded. That doesn't make any sense at all. That's like some 60s 
religious argument for shit. I don't know. It's like that's that's the that's the best you could have gone. You could have said anything. You could have gone, oh, thoughts and prayers, and then done nothing. And that would have been less dumb than blaming video games. You know what I mean? It's like, oh, it's fucking video games. You know who has a lot of video games? China, bro. South Korea. Those people aren't going around killing each other. They're just obviously killing themselves because <laughs> their, their work ethic culture is fucked. I don't know. It's, it's just that, that shit, like, like, I think that... I don't mind handguns. I think that makes sense to me, especially in a country where there are so many guns that maybe, maybe it is impossible. If they were outlawed, maybe it's impossible. Because in, in Australia, when we got rid of them, we didn't have as many guns per person as America did, right? Guys, I want you all to know that this theorizing about how to solve the gun control problem and the gun violence crisis in America, zero facts, no research. I'm just vibing it. I'm just saying shit that feels true in the moment. And I don't need your analytical responses telling me how I'm wrong because I know that I'm wrong. I'm just saying shit, bro. Why would you say it if you know it's not true? Why would you listen to Spearhead Sundays for a scientific analytical breakdown on gun violence and social economic problems in, in America, a place I've been to once? <laughs> I feel like that, I, I think handguns make sense. I don't, I don't mind the idea of handguns, um, but I don't get the, the assault rifle thing. I don't get like the, the, the guns that are definitely made for killing lots of people, right? Um, like that, that recent one, the dude had like a hundred round drum magazine or clip. I just said clip to fucking trigger you cunts. It's not a clip. A clip is different from a magazine. Um, see, I know enough about guns to piss people off. That's really the extent of my knowledge is I know how to say things that will annoy people. Like AR-15 sounds for, stands for assault rifle 15. No, it doesn't. It's armor light rifle. Shush. <laughs> I don't get, yeah, I don't get the, the, the guns that are designed for killing lots of humans and, and like why a 100 drum magazine is available for purchase for, for anyone. You know what I mean? Like that's definitely, that only has two reasons, 100 drum magazine. The army doesn't use it, right? Because it's impractical and fucked. The only two reasons is to either kill a fuckload of people, civilians, because it's not a combat weapon, right? It's either to kill a fuckload of civilians as fast as possible or shoot lots of bullets for fun. Hey, and I get it. So fun. I've shot guns before in Perth. I'm not going to lie. They're fucking awesome. They're so fun. I didn't like the handgun. Handgun freaked me out. Shotgun, fun as fuck, right? But I feel like we could maybe potentially sacrifice the joy of shooting lots of bullets really fast, bang, bang, yeehaw, for taking away someone's ability to take that thing to a supermarket. You know what I mean? Because the whole argument is like, oh, if you take away guns, people are just going to use knives. But it's like, well, the only way to stop a good guy with a gun, a bad guy with a gun is a good guy with a gun. I suppose it does work vice versa, doesn't it? <laughs> um... But like that, that, that most recent one, I can't even remember the name or where it happened because there's probably been 17,000 since it happened. Um, he killed something like, he shot like 30 people in 30 seconds and the cops took him out in, there's video of it, they took him out in 24 seconds. But he still managed, because he had that fucking drum and the assault rifle, he still managed to kill that, kill and wound that many people. Like 24 seconds is a miraculous response time, but he still managed to do that because the equipment was available. And it's like, I, I, I don't know. I feel like maybe it just makes sense to get rid of at least a 100 drum magazine. Maybe. Anyway, can't wait for the 16 paragraph emails that I'll get from this. Um, all right, what else are we talking here? I'm going to move away from all the fucking mass shooting shit. Hey, lighten it up a little bit. Um, oh, bro, how crazy is Ninja signing with Mixer? I think that's fucking awesome. Speaking of, um, <laughs> I was like, oh, speaking of, <laughs> speaking of mass shootings, let's talk about video games. Maybe they are related. Shit. Ninja, we got to watch him. Put him on a watch list. 
I think that's fucking awesome. Ninja signing with Twitch. I mean, Ninja leaving Twitch and signing with Mixer. I think that's fucking sick. You got to, how many, how many millions do you reckon he got paid, right? Because he's already a multi-millionaire. He's already probably getting like two to five, maybe even 10 million for endorsement deals with like, didn't he do shit with Sprite or something? Soft drinks? Some fucking thing that vir- virgins love, probably Mountain Dew. <laughs> he, he's doing all that, all that like big money making moves. So, and Mix is owned by Microsoft. I reckon, because I was, I was thinking like, how much money would I have to be paid to leave YouTube? Because it's not just, they don't have to just like, they don't have to pay you what you would have made on Twitch, what you're currently making on Twitch. They need to pay you for what you could make on Twitch in five years if you stayed instead of leaving. So essentially, you don't even double what they're currently making. You'd almost have to five to ten times whatever Ninja is currently making on Twitch to get him to leave for Mixer. Like I was thinking, if someone was to pay me to leave YouTube, I don't think I would even do it for less than $2 million. And I'm not making even close to a hundred grand or even 50 or even 30 grand on YouTube. But I would be thinking, well, if I leave YouTube, that's views, exposure, this, that, gone, unless all of my fans follow me to another platform, which let's be honest, kind of unlikely, right? So you need to pay me for in case I move to Mixer and then Mixer the platform fails and that harms my career and but I need to still be okay. That's what you're paying for is like the risk to get totally out of my hands. You know what I mean? So I reckon he would, dude, surely 20 mil, 10, at least 10. They're owned by Microsoft and they have no huge giant streamers. It's gotta be 10 or 20 million. I think that's fucking so sick. The cunt's probably going to stream once a week now. <laughs> I wonder if he has a streaming minimum. Maybe he just has to start up an account and he can do whatever he wants. Crazy. But it seems to be working. He got he got a million subs, and that's big on like a streaming thing. And I know, oh, they're giving away they're giving away free accounts, free subs. It's like, bro, I couldn't move a million people for free. To do anything. I couldn't I couldn't get like thirty thousand of my fans to follow me on Instagram when they watch one of my videos. Like the the, the amount of power that that cunt has is crazy just for doing that. It's very it's very interesting. But I saw like so many people angry about it because for some reason, like I saw some guy ranting about Ninja leaving from leaving Twitch as like he betrayed Twitch. It's like how could you fucking Betrayed Twitch. How, uh, when is enough enough? Like yelling about how much, like when, when does Ninja have enough money? How could you betray Twitch? It's like, dude, Twitch is owned by Amazon. A, like a giant multinational corporation that doesn't pay tax or its workers and fucks the planet. Do we have to show loyalty to them or can we just get paid? That's like going, like Twitch doesn't show loyalty to anyone. You know, like if Ninja fucking broke the rules, they'd kick him off the platform. There's no loyalty. It's a strictly a business relationship. That's like going, like I blew up on Facebook first, right? That's like going, oh, I can't believe you fucking left Facebook to start a YouTube channel. You've betrayed Mark Zuckerberg, multi-billionaire, spying on the planet, probably an alien. I can't believe you've betrayed him. When is enough enough? Cunts are just jealous, bro, I reckon. Because, like, I don't know, if you if you love... Like, if I love comedy, right? Like, I'm going to do that shit until I die. And, of course, I'm going to charge tickets to do it. Because you have to. So, if someone's like, hey, man, I'll pay you $20 million to do stand-up over here. What am I going to do? Say no? Oh, no, thanks. I've, uh... I actually have enough money, so I'm going to quit doing what I like. But thank you for the offer. I do appreciate it. But what I would rather do is just quit doing the thing that I like or just keep doing it for free anyway. 
Because that's essentially what Mixer offered him. They were like, hey, Ninja, so you're streaming five nights a week, yeah? And he goes, yep. And they're like, well, are you going to keep doing that on Twitch? And he goes, yep. And he goes, okay, well, how would you like to work the exact same amount, yeah, for, uh uh-huh, 10 times more than what you're currently getting paid? Oh, no, thank you. I have enough money. (laughs) <laughs> like, like why, where's the logic in that? Oh, no thanks, I have enough money and uh, even though you want to work, wanna, want me to work exactly the same amount or even less, I think I'll just stay here. That's like not leaving a room when it gets a bit too hot. It's like, oh well, I can improve my situation without doing anything, but I think I won't. I think I just won't do that. So yeah, I think it's awesome. It's, and you know, it, it also, it's also like... A good move for streaming in general because uh, Ninja leaving Twitch means that the next Ninja on Twitch can move up a step, and then all the people below them can move up a step. All the middle middle range people go up one, and this kind of shit. You know what I mean? And and then now with Ninja on Mixer, that means that every single other streamer and all these people that have come to watch Mi- Ninja, who obviously aren't only going to watch one person, nobody watches one cunt. They're going to check out all of the other people on this platform. More competition. It encourages Twitch to get be- get uh, to become a better platform. Maybe you know they'll they'll stop letting people suplex their cat live with their tits out. That'd be good. Um, and it, it it just encourages more competition. More competition. More money. More people. It's better for the whole industry. I don't know why you'd be mad at it unless you're a little bit jelly because you want fucking thirty million dollars for inspiring the next school shooter. <laughs> Oh fuck! Video games. Oh no, I'm not gonna do that. That's that's gonna be the extent of my shit on Trump. <clears throat> what else do you want to talk here? Oh, friendly Geordies wants me to do something. That's cool. I'll do that. I like him. Um, dude, I had this is a big this is a huge moment in my life, man. I've been waiting for this for years. I've been this. Is, I felt like I won the lottery recently. I really did. Because I felt like it was something that was so rare, yet so incredibly amazing, that uh, I can't believe that it's happened, okay? I took an Uber to the warehouse. That's not the amazing bit. That's the sad bit, because I don't have my license, right? If I did, I would just drive to the warehouse. But I caught an Uber to the warehouse because I had to carry a few things, and I'm not going to do that on the bus. But the amazing thing about this particularly sad experience is I had my very first zero word Uber. Not a single word was exchanged between me and my Uber driver from point A to point B. I couldn't fucking believe it. I got my Uber thing, the guy pulled up, I'm carrying all my shit. I have to put stuff in the trunk. Normally, Uber driver gets out and they help you. I don't need help, I know how to open a trunk, I know how to put things in a hole. I can do that shit, right? I don't want you to help. You're going to break it. It's all delicate shit. So this cunt pulls up, stops the car, opens the boot remotely without stepping out or even looking out the window, staring dead ahead like some kind of fucking robot. I put my shit in the boot. I'm like, cool. I, that was quick. And then I get in the back seat, right? Internationally recognized symbol of, I don't want to talk to you. I'm in the back seat, bro. And you know what? You know what he did when I sat in the in the back seat? I opened the door. I sat down. I said more words than him. I said, hey, mate. I said four words throughout this entire trip. This fucking Uber driver said zero. Not even hi or goodbye. Nothing. No words. Silence. Incredible. Right? So I get in the fucking back seat and I go, hey, mate. And you know what he says? He says this. And then just starts driving. Dude, next level shit. So he just starts driving. And then we're sitting there in silence. He's listening to his own music. I don't care. I'm on my phone. He doesn't ask if I want the music on or off. I don't care. I never care. Play what you want, bro. You got a, you got a fucking shit job. You can listen to your music. That's what I, you know, you're an Uber driver. Listen to what you want. If you wanted to listen to fucking a, an audio book of Fifty Shades of Grey and I could see you seeping into the front seat 
because you are so horny. I wouldn't give a fuck. Five stars. Listen to what you want. You have to be an Uber driver. You're not even Uber black. Listen to what you want. That's your right as a fucking Uber driver. The other night, I was coming home from um, from the Comics Lounge. I did a gig, and this guy was playing, uh, the Indian dude was playing Indian club tracks. Now, I don't know if you've heard traditional Indian party music. It's annoying and high-pitched, but if you mix that with Melbourne bounce club music, annoying, high-pitched, and really bassy, if you fuse those two genres of music... You actually get something that, if it was a baby, even the most religious conservative man would be like, okay, we can abort that one, because that's fucked. You know, like that's, that's what you get. An abortion, at a Christian, a conservative, traditionalist, Christian-approved abortion genre of music. That's what you get, right? The worst shit. It was like, oh, la, 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 that shit. And he's like, hey man, do you mind if I play the music? And in my head, I was like, I would rather put needles in my ear and then jump out the window in front of the Uber and then you run over me and end my life than listen to this for the next 40 minutes. But I said, sure man, listen to what you want. And then for the next 40 minutes, ah, the whole ride home. I got a fucking migraine by the end of the trip. Five stars anyway, because bad Uber drivers amuse me. You know, it's like a catch and release you get something that, <laughs> that probably that is unsafe for the environment. And you fucking let it out into the wild just to fuck some other ones, some other, someone else's night. It's like, if I got to deal with this, so do you. Five stars on you, mate. Anyway, this guy wasn't doing that. He's just playing like the radio. Um, and uh, driving fucking 20 minutes. And then we get to the warehouse. He pulls up. I'm like, oh, just here, thanks. Oh, so I said seven words. I said, hey, mate. And then I said, just here, thanks. And he pulls up, I jumped out. I was like, thank you. Seven words. Do you know what he said when I said thank you? He said this. Nothing. He said nothing. He said no words. Incredible. That's my fucking... I've been dreaming of that for years. A guy that just doesn't speak to me. I got a glimpse into what automated Ubers would be like. And guys, it's fucking... We've got to get on that shit. We've got to get people to start making these cars. Tesla's onto it. They need help. I'll never have to tell a fucking Uber driver about, about how... Oh, how do you get on stage? I couldn't do it. I can never have to have that conversation again. How's your day, mate? Busy? Yep. Pretty busy. It's Friday night. How about you, mate? You uh, you been partying? No, I'm just coming home. It's all. Oh, what have you been doing? Uh just working. Oh yeah. What uh, what do you do for work? Comedian. Oh, you're a bloody comedian, eh? Hey? Will you fucking tell me a joke, cut, eh? Hey? What are you fucking... I don't know how you could do that. I don't know. I couldn't do that, eh? Hey? You know, I've always wanted to be a comedian, but I get too nervous. Do you get nervous? You do? Oh, you don't because it's a skill? Oh, I would get nervous. You know, I, my friends always thought that I was a pretty funny guy. Like, I always make the boys laugh when I'm out of fire. Shut up! No words! Automate this shit. I don't want to have this conversation. So it was amazing, man. Uh, I wish I could give that cunt six stars. Zero words. See the new Marvel movies are coming out? Why do we need them? Do we need that? Do we need more ones? But I'm also kind of excited for them. Am I? Am I? Is is that like you know when when you when people are in an abusive relationship and and you just go, why didn't you just leave? And they go, I couldn't. And you think, why couldn't you just do it? I feel like I'm like that with Marvel movies, where I'm like, I'm I'm sick of the Marvel movies, but I'm also really excited to see them. Like I know, I know I'm just gonna end up hurt, but I really want to see him again. I feel like I'm in an abusive relationship with Marvel films. Like all, the, all I, I know that the only thing that ends with that, that that road is fucking disappointment and sadness. But I just can't wait. I really am excited for it. Saw some fucking think piece for the new Thor movie, which I'm actually excited about. They're gonna they're gonna do th- female Thor, which um everyone's gonna. Why are they gonna change the gender of everything? Hey, bro. 
Thor, the whole fucking law behind it, is whoever is worthy wields the hammer. So if a woman is worthy and she can pick up the hammer, it makes sense. Captain America picked it up. So really, there's been two male Thors. Get some, get some fucking clitoris in this shit. Except instead of the god of thunder, she'd be like the, the god of cleaning supplies. Um, no, but the, that storyline was uh, written by Jason Aaron in the comic books. Uh, and it's a really, really good run. Um, so I'm actually excited for it because it, it all made sense. The comic books, I don't know if they're going to change it, but the comic books, uh, it's really good. It's Jason Aaron's run on uh, Thor. Um, and this, he starts off male and then, and then someone else picks up the hammer because Thor becomes unworthy. So Thor is still Thor, but then there's a new bitch picks up the hammer. And she's like, I'm going to use this to build Ikea furniture in the rain and thunder. Um, but the, the thing is, 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 is when she's human and not empowered by the hammer and, you know, a god of thunder, she's just a regular woman who has cancer and she's dying of cancer. And the only time she's not dying of cancer is when she's wielding the hammer and saving the world. I think it's really, it's really good. It's a good read. Um, I don't know if they'll do that in the comic books, uh, in, in the movies, sorry, but I, I'm actually kind of excited for it. But I did see one think piece that pissed me off, which I think that that's the only thing that articles are here to do anymore. It's not ever to consider another person's point of view. It's just to write something that'll piss off a fuckload of people for clicks hate clicks and I fall for it every time. Actually, I've stopped reading them. I don't read them anymore. I look at the headline and I go, that makes me angry. I'm not going to click it because if I click it, they will write more things that make me angry because I've made them a little bit of money. That's what you should do. Don't click them. Screenshot it, post the headline on Twitter, go, look how fucking retarded this is. Don't post the link. Don't share the link. The less clicks they get, the more good shit they need to write, right? So um, it was like <laughs> something saying that... Uh, now that, we're ha now that we have a female Thor, are we also going to get um, a... What was it? It was fucking... Are we also going to get... Yeah, now that we have a female Thor, are we also going to get a pansexual, non-binary Loki? What do you want Marvel movies to be? What do you want superhero movies to be? Why don't we just, you know what? Why don't we just get rid of these plots, get rid of all these alien invasions and battle of the gods, and why don't we just change the Marvel universe into the great cinematic suck and fuck fest where everyone just dresses up in a costume and sucks and fucks their way through the multiverse? Is that what we really want movies to become? Oh, is Loki gay or straight? Neither. He'll fuck anyone. Get over here, Gamora. Show me that alien pussy. Is that what we want? Let me suck and fuck your green tits. Can we just stop with giving a fuck about who's fucking and sucking who? Why don't we just make them bash up monsters? I don't even want straight relationships in my superhero comics. This is what I want. What I, want. I want the Hulk beating the fuck out of the planet for two hours. That's all I want. I don't, I don't need to know how big the Hulk's cock is and whether he also wants to share it with another blue Hulk who happens to be a male, but they're gender non-binary. Who gives a fuck? I just want to watch the Hulk and Thor fight to the death with no sucking and no fucking. If you really want a, a, a pansexual Loki, I'm sure that they've already done that in the Marvel porn parody, right? Go watch that if you want a giant big suck and fuck fest. I swear, just, I don't know, just worrying about all these fucking um, genders and, and, and who's fucking who and all this kind of shit. Who cares? Can we, just in, can we just write a good movie? And if it happens, it happens. Like, that's what I, that's what I don't get. Like, I don't mind if it's in a movie. I don't, it's, it's cool if it's a good story. Like, I, like, honestly, one of my favorite movies is Brokeback Mountain. It's a fucking beautiful movie. I cry watching it. My mum took it to me when I was a kid. Um... And I remember, I remember we were standing in line and um, uh, when it was like we were at the movie cinemas and I would have been, I would have been pretty young. Um, like she took me to that movie to, so that I could see like a gay relationship on screen. Um, so we, and maybe I'm wrong. Maybe sucking and fucking is good because that, that, that whole movie was just sucking and fucking on a farm. Sucking and farm fucking. Um, and I remember we were standing in line and I might have been, I was like old enough to see it. So I might have been, I could have been anywhere from 13 to 15. 
I was old enough, right? Um, and mum was talking to this just this dude who also had a kid uh, my age because I was talking to the, the, the other boy as strangers. Uh, and the guy goes, mum's like, what are you guys seeing? And they're like, oh, we're seeing, it would have been The Incredibles or some fucking animated movie that was out at the time. We're seeing The Incredibles. And he goes, what are you seeing? And I go, oh, mum goes, oh, we're seeing Brokeback Mountain. And he goes, oh, the one, is that the one about the gay cowboy? She goes, yep. He goes, oh, fuck. <laughs> and I remember that. He, was just, he just looked at me. He was like, oh, fuck. Look out, son. You're going to see some gay shit. You're going to see about two hours of gay shit. And that was when I got fucking indoctrinated. And now I've got my mum's leftist agenda. And I've, got, I've been infused with cultural Marxism, like some kind of weird society-destroying tea. <laughs> Um, but no, man, it's one of my favorite films. It's really good. If you, if, if you want to watch, you know, gay dudes fucking and sucking on a farm, it's pretty good. That's not what the movie's about, but you know, it is a love story, but there's, there's a bit of sucking and fucking. And that's what we really need in, in the, in the Marvel universe. We don't need a female Thor. All right. We need just like a, like a, like just a monster that's made out of dicks with a hammer and the hammer vibrates. That's what we need. Um, all right. Should we do miscellaneous bit at the end here? I think we should. How have I managed to go over my data? 80 gigs a month and I go over still every fucking month because I got no um, internet at the warehouse. Where are we? Okay. If you would like to send an email into Speared Sundays, if you need some life advice, if you have a question you'd like me to answer, if you even just have a fuck story you'd like to tell me, send it in to contact on it, podcast at lewspears.com. Not contact, podcast at lewspears.com. I can't tell you how many fucking idiots ask me what, oh, what's the podcast email? I say it every episode. You're dumb, bro. You probably couldn't even spell an email if you got the chance. Podcast at lewspears.com. Um, okay. Where are we? Sorry, I'm just going to move this. Sorry if I'm making noise. Um, <clears throat> all right. Uh, I'm probably your only fan in the Philippines. Uh, hey, Lewis. I'm a 17-year-old girl and in my last year of high school, which means that the pressure to get into a good college is on. My parents and my other family members want me to pursue education in a state university for the free tuition, but the entrance exams there are the but the entrance exams there are of course harder and the acceptance percentage is lower. I'm fairly smart, but I had a terrible case of new student syndrome in an unfamiliar environment when I switched schools last year, which affected my grades and my physical and mental health. I'm worried that those affected grades will pull me down in taking the exam for that state university. I'm worried about not getting the free tuition and if by chance I get accepted into a different college, then my family and I would have to pay the expensive tuition fees and I would have to work harder to avail a scholarship. Well, see, I think that you wouldn't have to work hard at all because you're using, you're 17 and you use words like avail and unfamiliar and environment with the, with the N in it as well, which means you spelled it right. Um, I, I also, I'm also worried about not having a meaningful college life if I'm not accepted into the course I want to take, which is medicine. I've been so confused and the deadlines for the application make me very intimidated and unconfident in myself. I'm skilled in singing, oh, so I've caught myself thinking about just taking the easier route and going to college for that instead of, of, instead of working hard in medicine. I know that choosing medicine will land me a more stable job in the future, but my severe anxiousness about everything is holding me back from having a clear mind. I still need to talk to more people about this, especially with the before mentioned deadlines coming up, but I wanted to get an outsider to, a, a, outsider's opinions, namely yours. Please note, in my country, you don't amount to anything or get a good and stable job if you don't get into college. It's not as easy to say, fuck college, I'll just work directly after high school like it is in America. <laughs> it's, I would say it's not easy in anywhere uh, doing that. What can I do to sort everything out for a clearer view of my choices in such a short amount of time? And how do I get my folks to support me even if I don't get free tuition or a scholarship? Cheers from your only fan in the Philippines. 
Um, P.S. I want to show other people your content, but I still need to find someone who's okay with cunt being <laughs> used constantly in a casual context. Other than that, I love your shit. Keep up the hard work. Thanks, cunt. <sighs> yeah, okay, look. I don't know the state of the Philippines. Um, I don't know your fucking laws about... I don't know your rules about whether you can get how expensive college is or what quality your college is or, or whatever, but... I do think that because you have an internet connection, I would say that uh, the same advice that I like giving would apply. Take a gap year. You don't know what you want to do. I've read your email. You have no idea what you want to do. Take a gap year. What do you have to lose? You say that it's, it's hard going straight into work after high school. It's... You, might, you may not get a good job, but you know what you will get? You will get a year living in the real world, surrounded by real humans way older than you and your age, talking to them, getting life experience, having fun without the stress of trying to nail a degree that maybe you're, you don't want to do. Whether you pick singing or medicine, maybe one of those is the wrong choice. If you pick the wrong one, or even if you pick one of them and you think maybe you picked the wrong one, maybe I should be singing instead of medicine, maybe I should be doing medicine instead of singing. Why don't you just take a fucking year off, you are 17, get a job and live your life a little bit and get some fucking perspective and experience the real world and then decide what you want to do. I, I never understood all these people that go from kindergarten to primary school, to high school, and then immediately into another school, and then they get to the end of it, and they experience real life for the first time, because school and university is not real, it is studying, it's not real life, it's not what it's like when you get out, it's completely different, and they experience life for the very first time after, what, 24 years of school? And only school, 22, 24 to 22 years of only ever school. And then they go, oh fuck, I hate the section of real life that I've put myself in. I now either need to continue on down the path that I chose for myself when I was 16 till I'm 80 and hate my life, or I have to throw away my degree that I just got in the thing that I didn't want and now that I've experienced real life for the first time, I gotta go back to school for four years to get the degree that I actually want. I see that shit happen so much, so much. I'm 25 now. I would say that most of my friends who aren't comedians are still doing university because when they got out, they realized they picked the wrong thing and they didn't like the section of real life that that degree got them into. So they go back to uni or they just endlessly travel in a loop, blowing all of their money, and then they get back to real life, and they start working in the job that they hate because they went along with the, deg the degree they didn't know they didn't want, and then they're in a job they don't want, so now they just do the job, and then they hate their life, so they go traveling, and they run through all their money, and they go back to square zero, and they go back to the shit life they had, and then they just need to escape and travel and escape and travel, and that's it. Take a gap year, Work out what you actually want to do. Because what you're doing is you're making your very first choice as an adult, an independent adult, that your parents can't change, your teachers can't change, no one else has control over it, and no one else will feel the repercussions except for you. You're making your very first adult decision that will affect the rest of your life. This is your first ever big choice, ever, and you're just doing whatever your parents think or whatever you think you should do or whatever everyone else is doing or making a choice even though you don't know which choice is the right choice just because you think you have to make a choice now instead of only 365 days later. You know what I mean? Take a gap year, get some perspective, figure out what you want from your life before locking yourself into a trajectory that you don't even know you want to end up at that goal. All right? Um, or I could be wrong. <laughs> um, but that's, that's my advice. Um, all right. Hi, Lewis. 
My name is Carl. I love the podcast and your online stuff. Unfortunately, I can't come to any of your shows because I live in Sweden. That's all right. That's what Death Threats Don't Scare Me is for. My comedy special, loosebeers.com slash watch. I live in Sweden, aka the worst country to live in if you don't have 100% politically correct opinions. Okay, that's true. But also, what happens when you go to the dentist? Do you, do you, get, do you get your teeth fixed? Or do you become bankrupt? <laughs> I, think, I think you get your teeth fixed. Anyway, I'm in a bit of a sticky situation. I'm 17 years old in high school and I have a really great connection. Oh. Okay. I, have, <laughs> uh, I should have read these emails before I read them out in the podcast. I, if, you, if you guys wonder if I make these emails up or if I pre-read them, I don't. I just pick whatever's in my fucking thing. And every now and then... We stumble across some gold. I'm 17 years... I've only read the first sentence and I feel like this cunt has no idea what he's doing. I'm 17 years old. I'm in high school and I have a really great teacher who I have a connection with for the last year. (laughs) No, you don't. She's in her late 20s and during the summer holidays, we hung out together at her apartment. Okay, maybe you do. Things clicked, one thing led to another, and we ended up sleeping together. Okay, all right, maybe there is a connection. I must have prejudged you. I was a virgin, so it felt really great getting that off my chest, but now I don't really know what to do. We've spoken about it and decided not to do it again as she's still my teacher. I've been thinking and I want to tell my friend about it, but I don't want to get her fired. What should I do? Well, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to Google the age of consent in Sweden. Age of consent in Sweden. Jeez, this is going to put me on a fucking list. When you start when you start googling the age of consent in other countries that you don't live in, but that's going to put you on a fucking list. And you know what? The age of consent in Sweden is 15. So when you find out when you start googling the age of consent in countries you don't live in where the age of consent is lower than the one you currently live in, that definitely puts you on a second list of double sus. 15 years old, you're 17. I mean, yeah, I guess that's okay. Uh, It sounds like you're into it. Um, I just hope that she doesn't go any lower than you. Um, I don't know, man. I I get... You know what? I'd be telling everyone uh, for sure. I'd be telling all my friends. I'd tell my parents. I'd fucking do this or that. If it really was a positive experience which it sounds like it was, good on you. Um, But I still think that it's not a a thing that you want in the school system. Someone, a 25-year-old, fucking their students because soon they'll be 40 and the next version of you will be 12. (laughs) Um, Yeah, I don't know. You know what? I would tell everyone and see what happens. See if anybody else comes forward. Uh, yeah, look, I don't know. You would know better than I. I do. If you think there, if you think that it was just a weird one-off, and you're a very mature seventeen-year-old, which you could be, um, then yeah, protect her identity. But if you think that maybe she's a little bit sus and she fucked you, but you're on like the high end of her preference, if you know what I mean, age-wise, I've been telling everyone. Um. But yeah, bro, keep fucking it. If it's if it's if it's good for it, if it's good for you, you know, maybe maybe you could maybe you could be the wall between uh, between her and uh, the first years. <laughs> maybe that's that's a thing. All right, uh, I'm gonna end it there, guys. Thank you very much for listening. No slide season is on sale now. Quick note to Melbourne: the first night has less than thirty tickets left. Can we sell that out, please? All I need is fifteen of you to bring one friend. And it's gone. 30 seats left to the first Melbourne show. I'd love to sell that shit out. All the other cities are going crazy. Um, make sure you check loosespears.com slash gigs. I'm going everywhere. I'm going to Sunshine Coast, Gympie, Gold Coast, Brisbane, Wollongong, Newcastle, Sydney, Melbourne, almost sold out, Canberra, Albury, Bendigo, Hobart, Bunbury, Perth, Adelaide. I am going fucking everywhere. Loosespears.com slash gigs to get your tickets. Brand new show. I did a little test run through at Macquarie University and I fucking annihilate it. Um, so I'm really, really excited to do an even better version of that for you guys come September 6th is the first show. 
I'll see you guys soon. Luke and Lewis is rolling out. The first ever guest episode came out as well. It's really good. It's with Radio Mike. We talk about the one time he played, accidentally played fart sound effects over a million dollar national ad campaign. Very good shit. All right. I got to go to the airport. I'm Lewis Spears. That was Speared Sundays. I'll talk to you next Sunday. And hopefully uh, in, a, in a couple of months, I've talked to our, uh, our no show. Hopefully we will get it done when I come back um, in October to Sydney. So, all right. See you guys soon. That's the end of Speared Sundays.